and Ryo's. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start talking because I am going to be um, posting this video. So if you're watching it right now, it could be, you know, you're just watching it as something that's popped up on my feed. But since I love the Slay Gang so much and I want to make sure that no Slay Gang member is left behind, I went ahead and got a mannequin head. And since I have like the worst luck with ring lights, it's looking a little crazy right now. I have no luck with my ring lights at all. So I also had to buy a new ring light for y'all uh, when I bought my mannequin as well. So I'm just getting ready to do the setup for that. So basically with this live video, what I'm going to be doing is showing y'all exactly how I pull the hair from the bundle on my clothing. Well, it's I'm going to get into all of that um, as I go. But I've been getting like a lot of comments with people asking exactly how it is that I pulled the hair off of the bundle. So I thought it would be a good idea to go live with y'all while I'm showing y'all how I do this. Because if you have any questions, I do want to be able to answer them as I go. Um, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a little while and you go to my comment section, do you know like I try my best to answer the questions to the best of my abilities or you know i try to go as in depth with y'all as i can so um yeah if you're just joining in welcome this segment of my channel is going to be called the slay academy where i'm going to be showing y'all um different techniques on a mannequin um the reason why i don't get like really really close up when i'm doing my hair videos is because i'm working with clients and sometimes my rain light can be really bright and i just don't want uh, y'all are gonna hear my daughter in the background y'all i'm a mother my kids be right there glued to me too so you might hear my kids in the background a little bit but that is completely fine but um the reason i don't be like so close up on my clients is because i don't want to have the ring light like shining so bright in their faces so i try to do the zoom when i'm editing but for some of the Slay Gang members, that's just not enough with the Zoom, which is totally fine. So, I'm going to make it to where it is good enough for y'all to see because I don't want anybody to be left behind with any of the methods. I want everything to really be simple, easy to catch on. So, that's why I decided to do this. And I'll be going live every Wednesday. And I also will be posting the live. So, if you miss the live, you can always go back to my channel and it will be posted up there. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Just trying to set up this new ring light stand. Cause I have, like I said, I have the worst light with, uh, the worst look with ring lights. And this is like my fifth ring light, maybe six. So I'm just getting that set up right now. Oh no, does this come with the thing? Hold on y'all. Okay. So I'm almost finished with my setup. Really just doing my unboxing now. Everything just came in today. Okay. So I'm about to go ahead and cut my ring light on and sit that up so y'all can see. And I'm going to sit that right in front of the mannequin head. So before I start, is there any questions that y'all have? As far as like starting the knotless braids, is there anything that you want to see in particular with like starting? Of course, I'm going to be showing y'all how I set the hair up on my hair rack and all of that, giving y'all all those details. But is it anything that y'all feel like y'all need to know specifically? Because I am here to answer any questions that y'all have, which I always try to do. Where does this go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so let me cut this ring light on. Okay, that's way better. Yeah, I found this cute little ring light off of Amazon. Maybe this one will do better because it's not so big. So maybe the light won't be so bright as the other ones are. It won't be too much. Okay, so I'm just setting that up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and prop my phone up. Like I said... Y'all feel free to feel free to come on now. What is going on? Okay, feel free to communicate with me. 
because that's what this live is for. Raya. And once again, I'm not really good with this whole going live. So I am trying, y'all. Bear with me. I don't normally go live. Okay, what? so I'm going to just have to move this over a little bit because my phone is charging. Okay, so now I'm about to go ahead. Whoa, what just happened? Okay, so I'm about to go ahead and set up my little mannequin or whatever. And I'm going to give y'all details about Raya. I'm going to give y'all... Ra, all right, you have to watch out now. Come on now. Mom's trying to work. I'm gonna give y'all details. So, okay. What I sit my mannequin, I mean, what I sit my hair on is called a clothing rack. I found my clothing, my, uh, come on. Y'all, you're gonna hear my daughter. I'm so sorry. Just work with me. Okay, I get my, um, is there any other product you can use? Yes, so I'm gonna get into that. I found a really, really, Raya. Can you go upstairs? So I found a really, really good product that I love now, which is my personal favorite. Um, and I have been using this on like my last couple of videos because Shine and Jam is hit or miss depending on the client's head. You're not always going to be able to lay the hair down with Shine and Jam. Sometimes since Shine and Jam is a little bit water based, it can cause the hair to wave up more so um, than laying down. So I always try to like experiment with other products and I came across this really, really good product right here called um, the Braid Formula by Eben. I personally have not had any problems with using the braid formula ever since I've started. It's like literally my all time favorite now. I don't even really use Shine and Jam anymore. What I used to do before when I had first started this using this was uh, cleaning the parts with Shine and Jam and then just laying the hair down with this. But now I clean the parts with this and I lay the hair down with it. It comes in like three different sizes. Every time I get the biggest size, um, I think I spent about like $9 for this, if I'm not mistaken. It's a really good hole. This is how it looks. And I haven't found Raya. Right oh, hold on, y'all. Let's go. Because I, I can't even think straight. Don't Okay, so I haven't found anything that holds as good as this. Babe, babe, I'm, I'm live. Can y'all go upstairs? Okay, so I haven't found anything that um holds as good as this. So this is my all-time favorite. This is what I like to use now when I'm doing my knotless braid. Um, go. So this is what I use to put the hair on because I get a lot of questions asking what I use to put the hair on. So about my braid rack, well I call it a braid rack, it's not really a braid rack. It's a clothing rack. So this is how the clothing rack looks. I found it at Goodwill. It was $6.00. Um, they have these clothing racks everywhere y'all like you can get them from Amazon. You can get them from Walmart You can get them from big lots. They had them in Ross um, I even seen them in Dollar General like they have them in all types of stores like you can get them anywhere So this is where I put the hair on right here. It's a clothing rack. It has multiple little racks on it I only really use the middle rack right here These two middle racks and then I use these racks right here but what I like to hold the hair on, since I don't, um, I don't section the hair out anymore, I'm going to show y'all exactly what I do. So, okay, so this is the hair that I'm, I normally like to use when I do my um, knotless braids. I love the pre-stretched outre hair. Really, y'all, any pre-stretched expression hair is gonna be bomb. Like, 
I love expressions. Hair does matter. The quality of the hair matters when you're doing knotless braids. So you just want to make sure you have a good quality of hair because the better the quality, the better the hair is going to flow. The better, um, the better the braids are going to look and all of that stuff. Like if you're using hair that feels like really plasticky, the nine times out of 10, when you dip it, it's going to be frizzy. It's not really going to have that silkiness to it. So I love to use this pre-stretched outre expressions hair because as you could tell, like it's like it's not connect line. It's like a um I don't know how to explain it, but you can tell by like looking at the texture of it. This is the texture that I try to go for when I'm doing my knotless uh, braids. And as you can see, like it just flows really good. And then once you dip this hair, it's just amazing. Okay, so once I take the bundle out, it's like this. Once I take it out of the rubber band. So what I like to do, since it's pretty thick, is you can, as you can see right here on my um, braid rack, it will kind of be too much. This is why um, your hair might be like giving you a hard time when you're pulling it off. Because if you don't do what I'm about to show you, this is what's going to happen. When you're pulling the hair, a lot of people say, well, how do you get the hair to um, pull from the bundle without the unnecessary, the unnecessary tangling or shedding? Most of the time, if you're just putting it straight on there without like doing what I'm about to show you, that's what's going to cause it to do all that tangling. It's going to shed. You're shedding unnecessary hair. So we want to we want to avoid that and we want to actually prep the hair. So what I do, I like to run my hands through it, right? You got to get all the kinks out first. This is going to help from that unnecessary tangling. So just run your hands through it. Any kinks you feel, just get them out. So then what I like to do after I've done that, I'll separate the hair in half. Boom. So now you have two little pieces to work with. So I would like, you know, just put one on the other side. And then if it still feels like it's too, too much hair to move it down a little bit more. If it still is like, I like, I like the braid, the BTL gel. Um, I would probably rate it like a, what would I give it a rating of? I would rate the BTL gel like a seven. Personally, I didn't like, I wouldn't use it long term. Like it was okay when I first started using it. But I, what I did notice is over time, it started to get like really hard. And I don't like that. Like it got too hard to the point where when I was trying to like scoop it out, it would be so hard by the time it's time for me to put it on the client's hair. Like the product would be like, how can I explain? It would be like just too too hard like i didn't like the consistency of it after a certain amount of time so the braid the btl gel is okay but it's not my top favorite like um the braid formula is my um top yes the edge booster is nice i like it for the edges um i haven't had any problems with the edge booster before i found all of these other ones i was using the edge booster for a long time so if you have that you could also use that um, but the BTL is just like, uh, it's not my personal all time favorite just because of the fact that it gets really hard over a certain amount of time. And I really don't like that. So, okay, y'all, we got them in two sections. Now we got them in two sections. I'm sorry. I know I'm all over the place, but I'm trying to, you know, get through this. Um, uh, and then I take it and I split it one more time. So now it's able to fit on here. Right? So what I'd like to do, make sure before before I'm pulling it, I'm going to run my hands through it. And you can also do it like for two. But if you want to avoid the shedding, then just make them a little smaller. So just run my hands through it. And then I'm going to sit it right there. So when I'm pulling the hair, let me turn it this way so y'all can still see. If you're with me, uh, put your thumbs up. Because I need to make sure like I'm not losing y'all. I don't want to lose y'all. If you're still with me, just put your thumb, comment the thumbs up emoji if you're still with me. Okay, so now that it's right here, what I like to do is I just pull it as I go. So normally when I'm doing my knot list, hey Pooh, what's the hair called? So I'm using the um, pre-stretched expressions in the Outre brand. So this is the one I'm using, the pre-stretched Outre expressions okay this is the best hair for me personally um and i have really good access to it in my beauty supply stores now the top hairs uh you can use you can use the pre-stretched outre you can use the pre-stretched sensational which is the rua 
any pre-stretched expressions is going to be good okay so when i'm starting off i like to pull little sections and what i'm going to do so you can see it at a good angle i just like to start off with a little section because you want to make sure that the hair uh, is not really bulky at the top. If you start off with big sessions, then it's gonna be, um, do you like the braid babe? Is that that hair? I've tried the braid, the braid babe hair. Um, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, how can I explain it? It's okay. If you wanna use the braid babe hair, that's okay too. I've used it a couple of times back home just because they didn't have this um, in my area. But if they have the braid babe, you could use that. It's not bad. It's not bad to use it all. Um, so I just pull it, but the key to when you're just pulling it like this, you just have to make sure that the hair is detangled. Run your hands through it. That's gonna keep it from having the kinks. Okay, so now y'all, we're about to get into a closer look of how we actually are going to feed the hair in and i'm actually going to be showing y'all how i pulled the hair as well so i found this little mannequin head off of um amazon i don't know what we're going to name her yet but this is the mannequin head that y'all are going to be seeing me use in the slay academy series because it's just going to be um more convenient to use a mannequin versus trying to do this on the actual person when I don't have, you know, access to my people that I really need access to for this, which would be like my sisters or my best friends. So the mannequin is just going to be more convenient for me. So I'm just going to bring this down some so that y'all can see. Make sure the angle is good. Okay, boom. So now y'all should be able to see the mannequin and you should be able to see my braid rack so i want to make sure you know we're getting both of them right there so what i like to do is start off they sent this little comb too but i like to use um I'm trying to read the comments too okay so i'm trying i like to use normally i like to use a rat tail a metal a metal end rat tail comb but i'm just going to be using this one because it, it came with the mannequin so um, I don't do the, I don't do the method anymore when I do the part down the middle. If you're a beginner, then you can definitely use that method. But for me, since I've like been doing it for so long now, I've gotten used to just parting as I'm going. So I'm just going to show you how I do the nape area. What size braid would y'all like to see me um, show you how to do? Would you like to see medium? Would you like to see small? What I'm, y'all, I'm sorry. My husband is, uh. He's on the game. If you have a husband or something, you know, husband or son, they play the game, then you know my pain right now. So if you hear somebody yelling in the background, it's just because he's on the game and we're just not going to pay that no mind. So normally when I'm doing my pardons, I like to um, start in the nape area. So depending on the size, if I'm doing um, small braids, if I'm doing small knotless braids, then I like to do three going across the nape before i start uh getting to where the ear is i'll do like three rows going across now also depending on what the client's head can fit then that's going to determine how many rows you're doing in the nape area because sometimes clients have longer napes if they have longer napes then you're typically able to get more rows in that area sometimes short clients have the shorter nape areas where you can only get like two rows in before you start going from side to side after you reach the ears so i'm just going to be showing y'all how i do that so what i like to do as well i'm just going to clip that out i'm going to get my slave in if you haven't already you can go to my site slave by ray hair code dot site to purchase a slave band and what i love about the slave bands i don't have to put the product on my hand it goes straight to the band um i can also put my clips on there which is what i like to do i'll put my metal clips on the sides and that's just like convenient for them to already be there. That way I'm not breaking my back to try to turn around and get the product. And it's also not melting on my hand because I have it on my product band, my sleigh band right here. So now I'm going to just put a little bit of this braid formula on my sleigh band. Y'all, I love the braid formula. I love the consistency of it. And I love the hold. Um, before when I was using Shine and Jam, I would have to use Shine and Jam and Edge Control to get the hold that I wanted. But since I have this, I don't even have to do that anymore. So basically, I like to clean the part up. 
which I really don't have to, you know, do too much of that because it's a mannequin head. But I'm still, I want to show y'all step by step with what I do as if it were an actual client. So basically, you just want to um, clean that parting up. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Just going to get that part nice and clean. And this is why I like to use my um, bag. Y'all got me nervous over here. This is why I like to use my little metal end comb because I can get the part as crispy as I need it to be. So I'm just going to do that. Just cleaning that part up. Now, when you're doing knotless, you always want to make sure you have clean parts because that's one thing that's going to stand out with your style. That's another thing people are checking for. Are your parts clean? So just always make sure that you have a clean canvas you want to make sure you have those clean crispy parts because that's what's going to make your braids stand out okay so now i'm just going to clip the rest of the hair so what i'm going to do i'm going to split this in half one side is going to be small and one side is going to be medium so i can show y'all the way i would do medium and the way that I would do for small. Now, I'm going to start out with small since I'm on this side. So I'm just going to clip that out the way because this is what I'm going to show y'all the medium with. So to start out with a small, another thing I love to do y'all, you just got to make sure, my advice to give when parting is make sure that your parts are big enough for Make sure your parts are big enough for the braid to fit. You don't want to do like super duper small parts because it may be too much for the client's hair. Now, I do have some clients with fine strands of hair. You'll know if your client has fine strands. Now, if the client has like fine strands of hair, then you want to make sure your part is a little bit wider because what will happen is if you're doing knotless braids and you have these super duper 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 small parts, it could be too heavy for the client's hair because you have to build that braid. It could be too heavy and then your client's hair could possibly snap. And we don't want that because it's still a protective style. So we still got to make sure that we're protecting the client's hair while doing the install for the style. And you just want to make sure over time, it's not going to be snapping on their roots of their hair. You want to make sure they have enough room for it. Okay, so this is how my hair will be on my little braid rack. I don't use these rows anymore. I used to when um, I started, when I first started out, I used to, but what I noticed when I was like sectioning the hair off, I was taking more time because as soon as these, th as soon as the rack got cleared, I would have to fill the rack up again. And that was taking more time for me, like sectioning the hair off between the service. Like that was adding more time to the service. So that's really why I stopped doing that. So um, like I said, I'm going to make sure I just run my hands through the hair again. And I'm also going to be showing y'all how I pull it while I braid. So I'm trying to get it at a good angle. Knotless braids can last up to three months. I've had a client, she came in six weeks afterwards and she got a retouch. Her hair lasted her. Um, she kept them in for three whole months and they did good. So just depending on, um, the client's hair texture, what I noticed is softer hair textures, softer hair textures may not last as long as a client with more coarse hair. So basically like say your client might be like mixed or something like that, or her hair is really soft. It may not last as long as someone with a more coarse type of, um, hair texture, but as long as you tell them that they need to spray their hair as long as they're taking care of their hair once they leave your chair it can last you a long time you just have to make sure you actually take in the proper um care of your hair at home because they can last you a while no let me see do you only use the red even or do you use no i use the the red even because this one is the um for the braid formula, I only use the red one because this one says medium hold. The other one is like soft hold, which I don't want soft holds when I'm doing my braids. I want something that's actually going to hold and lay the client's hair down. So now I've ran my hands through the uh, braid hair. And now I'm going to just make sure I'm putting the product on the client's hair. 
And another tip that I can give y'all when you're doing knotless braids, make sure you're combing the hair where you want that braid to lay. So I want the hair to lay, I want the braid to be in the middle of the box. I wanna show you exactly why I say that. So with knotless, you wanna make sure you have that nice flat look to them. So I just like to um, comb it in place and get it to where I want it to be, which is gonna be like right there. I want it to lay right in the middle of the box. That's how you're gonna get that flat look. So they can pull it up and it's not gonna be any knots. They can uh, wear it down and it's not gonna be any knots. So if this is a good angle, can y'all let me know? If it's not, if you can't really see when I'm pulling the hair, also feel free to let me know. So what I like to do, so I'll take the hair and I'm gonna put it in three sections. So I'm gonna stop so y'all can see exactly what I do, okay? So now I got three sections, one, two, three. So as you, if you know how to, you know, you know how to braid, we're just gonna take it and we're gonna bring it across one time like that, boom. I haven't done anything. I'm now about to form the braid. So what I like to do is take a little piece. It's already been detangled with my fingers, right? So I just like to take that little piece and just pull it. And as y'all can see, as I'm pulling it, it's not tangling. No shedding. Boom. We just separated the piece from the braid rack, right? So now with this new method that I like to use, I feel like I had lost a lot of people when I had um, showed how to do this. So basically, I done picked it up. Now I'm taking my thumb. I'm forming a C, right? Now I'm going to take the rest of my hand and just hold the hair like that. So boom. Now, this is how I'm about to feed the hair in. So let me bring it a little closer so y'all can actually see. When I'm feeding it in, I'm trying to get a good angle for y'all. Okay, so, whoa, we're gonna drop the hair. Okay, so I done formed my C with it while I'm feeling it. I'm about to bring it in between my index finger and my thumb. So where this strand is on the end, that's where I'm feeding the hair into. So boom. So now it's fed in. And I'm going to braid. And I'm going to do the same thing. Pull in a little bit of that hair. You also want to make sure you're starting with small pieces. Because if you're starting with big pieces, then, um, what would you say? Okay. You can tell them to spray it with like braid sheen. Braid sheen spray, braid spray, anything like that. Anything that's gonna add that shine to their hair and also make sure that they're having like a satin bonnet, satin scarf, anything satin that's gonna maintain that moisture and um, just keep it, keep the hair hydrated. So basically I'm showing y'all again. So I didn't took, I pulled the piece off. Here's the piece. Take your fingers, form a C. So basically form the C and then I'm just holding the hair with the other fingers. That's how I'm feeding the hair in. So now I'm taking it again between my index and my thumb. Just bringing it like that. Boom. Now the hair is in. And you just want to make sure you keep a tight grip on it. And as you can see, the braid is starting to form. So I'm just going to keep on doing that. And I want y'all to watch as I do it. So I'm pulling the hair. No tangles. No unnecessary strands. So I got my C formed. Y'all see it? I'm bringing it where my index and my thumb is. It's gonna be in between here. So now, boom, I'm bringing it in. Y'all see? And then you just braid it. And you also wanna make sure you're tucking. I'm gonna do another um, segment on tucking um, with like blonde hair so y'all can see exactly what I'm talking about. That'll be next week. Next week we'll do tucking. But this week, I'm just going to focus on pulling the hair and feeding the hair in. So basically, once again, I'm about to form my C with my fingers. I'm going to take the rest of my fingers and grab the hair. Boom. Now I'm about to feed it in between my index finger and my thumb. Maintaining that tight grip so that I'm not losing the form of the braid. So boom, here we go. Now it's in there. Now I'm going to braid. Boom. 
Now y'all see that not that no not look is forming. It's looking natural. That's the goal with uh, knotless braids. You want them to look as natural as possible. You want it to look uniform. Boom, pulling the hair again. Okay, that's a better angle right there. So I just pulled the hair. Y'all see no knots, no unnecessary tangling, no pre-prepping the hair on the rag. I'm literally pulling as I go, okay? Taking the hair, forming my C, grabbing the wrist with the other fingers, boom. Now I'm just gonna maintain that tight grip. Y'all can see I have not let go of that grip that I have on the braid. And just feed that in. So now I'm gonna start braiding down. Okay? So then I'm gonna take some of that product. I'm just gonna smooth out the strands. And anytime you feel the client's actual hair, you just wanna make sure you're taking some of that product and just smoothing it out. And keeping the hair behind, keep the braid hair behind the client's hair. Boom. And then you just braid, use the twist tucking method. Can y'all see the uniform look? And anytime you feel like the, the client's hair is actually like bulky or something like that, bulging out the braid, Just keep on smoothing it down. Okay, so I'm gonna show y'all again. So I'm gonna bring it up to the camera. So now you can see. Thank you, Pooh. We've made a knotless braid. And this is why I say put it right there in the middle, because watch. This is how they're gonna be able to pull it up. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again. It's so simple, y'all. This, ever since I've been using this method, I haven't used any other method. Doesn't matter how many pieces you add in, is there a certain amount you should use? Okay, so my advice as far as like the pieces that you're adding in, what I like to do when I'm uh, doing my knotless braids, I like to call, I call it building the braid. So basically you add in however many pieces um, that you require for that certain size. So you know the size that you're going for. Once you feel it being that consistency that you want, then you stop adding the hair in. So say, this would be my small. So this is, I felt the consistency that I want. I don't feel like I have to add any more pieces in. Now, if you would like to, I can show you if it will be easier for you to like pre-section the hair, then you, what, what I would say to do is this. You figure out what size you would need from that bundle to make that braid. So say like, this would be your small. Feel it, feel how much you would need. No problem. So feel how much you would need, so boom. Then what you can do is lay it out on your rack. I'm gonna show you right here. You can lay it out on your rack. So I would say do about what, like six or seven pieces, but you wanna start out with small pieces. Start with small, thin pieces. London, I'm doing a video, please. Okay, go upstairs. He told me to bring Daddy home. But Daddy sees that I'm trying to do a video. Come here, Lo. Go. go. You're scary because of that bed. Okay, go. DJ. Okay, y'all. So now you're going to just separate them, starting off with them pieces. As y'all can see, my, my kids won't let me be great with this live. But we're still going to get it together. With the thin pieces, keep it going. Lay them out on your rack. If this is what you have to do, then you can do that. But I guess since I've had like more experience, then um, I just don't have to do this anymore. But if you're more at like a beginner level, then this could work for you. So just lay them out on the rack. So that's what? That's five pieces. Okay, six, seven. So as you see, I have seven pieces laid out right here. Hold on one second, y'all.
okay y'all my apologies so i might end up having a film uh, this video to go more in depth but i'm trying to do it on live so that i can answer questions as i'm going but y'all y'all see i'm trying to do like a thousand things at once okay so once again we're gonna section that hair off so you see the size of this one the goal is also to make sure your pardons are the um yes girl it's crazy the pardons are the same size all around okay so boom i want to make that part So I'm going to do one more look, I mean, one more braid on live. And then what I'm going to end up doing is recording a video on this and posting it. So that way it's not like so much going on and I can edit it the way I need it to be. So I'm going to put it all over the braid, keeping that braid based in the middle. So I'm going to comb it all up to that middle spot right there because that's where I want the braid to sit. So now I'm going to section the hair out. I'm going to show you all how to do it. If you want to section the hair, I've sectioned it into seven pieces. Y'all, give me one little moment because I just had to go up the stairs and your girl is out of shape, okay? So that's why I'm breathing hard like this. But we're not going to focus on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I have the hair in seven pieces, right? I'm trying to show you. Okay, seven pieces. So I'm going to start with small little pieces like that. So splitting the hair into three sections. Boom, one, two, three. We got three sections for it, okay? Then I'm just gonna start the form of a braid, but I'm not doing an actual braid. Then I'm gonna take the hair, form a C with my fingers. You see the C? So with these three fingers right here, I'm going to be holding the hair that's hanging. Boom. Now I got my C and I'm holding the rest of the hair with my other three fingers. So then I'm going to take the hair in between my index finger and my thumb finger. So it's right behind that third piece. And I'm going to just tuck it in there, maintain a good grip. Never losing my grip. Braid it once. Picking the next piece up. Doing the same exact thing, forming that C, grabbing the rest of the hair with my other three fingers, feeding it in just like that in between my index and my thumb. Maintain that grip. Boom. You should start to see your braid forming beautifully. Form that C, wrap the hair around. Now I'm grabbing another piece. This is if you have to use the beginner method. Otherwise, just pull from the bundle. Grab that piece with the rest of the fingers, form your C with your thumb, your index, feeding it in between your index and your thumb right here. Never lose your grip. Keep that nice tight grip on it. Okay, now we're going to start to put the um, put the even little braid formula on there. I'm smoothing that out because I can feel where the mannequin's hair is. I'm going to put that behind the braid hair, and I'm going to be smoothing it out with the braid formula. And y'all, they knew what they was doing making this braid formula because, baby, like I told y'all, since the first time I used it, I haven't went back to anything else. So just... You can see where the mannequin's hair is too, but I can feel it. Since I'm braiding it, I can feel it. What I'm going to do, let me show y'all exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the mannequin's hair right here. I don't want it in the middle of my braid hair because that's, that's not going to be tucked. So when I tuck, I like to take the actual hair, put it behind the braid hair. 
because that's all you want to be able to see is the braid hair. You don't want to be able to see the client's hair. Okay. Using that braid formula again, just to smooth it out. And I'm smoothing the back because that's where I'm keeping the hair. At. I'm not keeping the hair at the top. I'm keeping the client's hair at the back behind the braid. And that's how you get that tuck in. But like I said, next week, I'm going to do a tuck in video. And if lives are not, you know, if lives don't work out for me, then I'm also going to do like the Slay Academy in a video. But I thought it would just be easier to come to live and be able to interact with y'all on live. So just keeping that hair behind the braid hair, I'm just going to braid it down, keeping it tucked behind. Now y'all see, you see where the mannequin's hair and the braid hair are like separate. What I'm going to do is take the braid formula, smooth it going down like that. And that's going to help hide it behind the braid hair. So I'm basically like twisting as I'm tucking. That's how I'm getting like that uniform look with the braid. I'm twisting and braiding, twisting and braiding. Twisting and braiding, twisting and braiding. And naturally, I just braid it fast like that. And that's how you start to get that uniform looking braid. So I hope this was helpful just as this is just the first part of the Slay Academy. So basically, I'm going to let y'all see what I did today. As you can see, those are nicely formed, knotless braids. Right in the middle, the clients will be able to lift them. No lumps, no bumps. Yes, I will do a video on that as well. I want to do all, I want to make sure y'all have like everything to prepare yourself to do your clients. I want to make sure that you have all the methods down. I don't want to have any slave member left behind. I want to make sure that I'm giving y'all all the details with the styles. Um, but this was just the first part, just the little knotless basics or whatever. So make sure y'all comment and tell me. Yes. So I feel like the confidence, the braiding confidence comes with experience. Like the more that you're braiding, the more confident you'll start to be once you're seeing like the results that you're um, looking for. Basically, you just have to keep on practicing until you get it right. Because I'm telling you, if you just practice, it's going to come naturally. Like everybody has to start somewhere. When we're starting, they're not always going to be perfect. That's why you just have to keep on working to perfect your, your craft. Now, if you have family members or friends Thank you so much. It was nice having you on here. So if you have family members or friends that are willing to let you um, practice on them, I highly suggest you trying it that way. If not, go to Amazon, get you a mannequin head. I believe I only paid like $28 for this mannequin head. And y'all can see like this knotless looks as if I was working on an actual client. So just keep on practicing. If Like, like Aaliyah said, if at first you don't succeed, then dust yourself off and try again. Like just keep on trying until you get it right because baby i promise you it's gonna get right over time like i've only been doing knotless for what three years now and i'm just i feel like this year i'm just now getting them to the point to where i want them to be you just gotta keep on working working on yourself and don't give up like it's gonna come naturally so i hope y'all enjoyed this live thank y'all for coming and tuning in with me make sure you comment on this video and tell me what type of videos you would like to see for the slay academy segment because this is where I want to get up close and personal with y'all and actually be working with y'all on live while I do this. Um, so yeah, like I said, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you for being a member of the Slay Gang. If you're watching this video when the, the video has already been posted and you're not yet a member of the Slay Gang, then make sure you stop what you're doing and hit that subscribe button and join the Slay family. Okay, see y'all in the next video. Thank you.